You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. The Father, do Senhor Deus Filho, our God, the Son, do Senhor Deus and our God, Santo, Holy Spirit, aí onde você there, está, minha amiga, where you are, amiga, my dear listener, seja em casa, may no trabalho, you be at home or at work, na rua, in the streets, no hospital, numa clínica, in a hospital, um presídio, wherever you may be, even in a prison, qualquer que seja, Whatever local, is the place, que seja and wherever there is your affliction and anguish, seja mal where there is an evil that's tormenting you in the name of the Most Almighty, be free. Seja livre neste be free momento. in this moment. Em nome do in Jesus, Jesus name, and you who believe, you say amen. Thanks be to God. Let us meditate in the scripture of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 40. I want to read 40 and then we're going to jump to the scripture I want to reach. Verse 40 says, There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another the glory of the stars. One star differs from from another in glory. Now let us read then this one. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. So let us stop in this scripture. This is how the resurrection is. The resurrection of the dead. I don't believe Paul here was addressed, addressed by the Holy Spirit talking about the dead physical. He's talking about the dead of those who were holy, those who were spiritually dead, those that are dead in their sins and mistakes, those that do not know or did not have an experience with Jesus and they are still dead in their sins. Which are those kind of people that you know, that I know, relatives, family members of ours, friends, those that do not understand nothing of God, right? They, you talk about God to them, you, t you say anything spiritual to them, and it's like they have no idea. Why? Because they are dead. The dead, can you speak to the dead? The dead is, he can hear you. Like us, we were, in, we were dead in our sins and mistakes, but we didn't understand. We didn't understand anything. Nothing of God we understood. But when When we sown our body, our corrupted body, 
when we sacrifice our life to this world, when we took our life and we say we do not want this world, when we said we don't want to submit to this world, so I accept the Lord Jesus in my life as my Savior, as my redemption. So then I decide to be baptized in waters, so confirming my death to this world, confirming that I'm not going to live in this world anymore, so I am buried by the baptism in waters. Baptism in waters is a burial of our human nature, our corrupted nature, of our corrupted nature. When we give up our life in this world to live a life in function and according to God's will, and we die for this, and we are buried in baptism of the Holy Spirit, of water, then we are able to be raised up, we are raised up in resurrection of an incorruption. So we were sowing in corruption, we were sowing in dishonor, and then raised, we are going to be raised, and we are raised and resurrected in glory, in God's glory in us. We sow, we sow in weakness, and then we are raised in power. You see that the following verses says, there is a natural body, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body, there is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. So, you and I, we have sown a natural body, meaning we sacrifice we sacrifice that body that receives when we are born. We were children of our parents and of our parents. But when we sacrifice this body, then we receive a spiritual body. Keep following me. Do not lose focus. Remember that we spoke last in regards to the objectives that many people... I was baptized in the waters, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I want to get married, I want to make money, I want to have this, I want to have that. I did say that the devil knows what are our intentions. And because of these intentions that we express, because of these anxiousness, or anxieties that we carry and we show to people, friends, oh, I want to get married, oh, I can't be single, these kinds of, the, of confessions shows the anxieties of the things of this world. But Bishop, don't we have the right to get married? Yes. Don't we have the right to have a life stable and comfortable? Yes. But these things that the world offers to their children or to theirs, these things will not come from the world. They must come from God for us. It, the world satisfies those who are in the world. The world fills them with things of the world. And God, our eternal, almighty God, who has called us from darkness, that removed us from the world, He is the one who is going to care for us. And if we are living in a spiritual body.
entende que eu estou falando? Do you follow what I say? Pay attention, because if you do not understand what I say, what I explain, is because certainly you do not have the Holy Spirit. I am speaking Greek to you. It will be the same you try to convert an unbeliever. You tell them something spiritual he doesn't understand, because he's not born again. He didn't die for this world. So, when we show concerns and worries for the things of this world that we have let go, we left the world. We are no longer in the world. We live in God's kingdom. We live inserted in God's kingdom because God's kingdom is the altar. God's kingdom is the secret place of the Most High. Wherever you are, there is God's kingdom. Wherever you go, there is the altar. Wherever you go, there is the well of spring water of that flows from within you because you are a spiritual person. You have sown your body in corruption and received a body now that is in corruption, washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Do you follow? If you follow very well. So it says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. What does it mean, living soul? Are the children that are born today, when you carry a baby, when, you, when a baby is born, that, that baby is born until they, they let go of the age of innocence and now they come to the age of reasoning. And in this age of reasoning, do they tend to lead themselves to evil or good? Why do they go for evil? Because they are living so. So the nature, the Adam nature, the nature of the first Adam is corrupt. Is a nature that is distorted. The soul means heart. Soul means feelings. Jesus did not come to save the spirit. He did not come to save the body. He came to save the soul. Why the soul? Because the soul is what is in need of salvation, not the spirit. The spirit is your mind, your intelligence. That is God. God gives us wisdom, lends us wisdom. When we die, whether we are Christian or not, that wisdom returns to God. But the soul, mm -mm, the soul, no, the soul that are based with feelings, which is a human nature, that soul right there, that makes a decision according to the heart, which is desperately wicked, always tends to do evil. So the child, you give them the best, you teach them the best. But then, because they are living so, they are born from parents, so their nature is a living soul, meaning that their nature tends to do what is evil. Soon or later, they are going to be reaping what they have been planting, which is evil. People tend to do evil. And why? Because they were born with a human nature, which is Adam's nature. So then, this is written. So first man, Adam, was made a living soul. So God did not... He did not bring... He not, they were not born, Adam and Eve, they were not born of the Holy Spirit. God created them with His hands. God used His hands to create Adam as well as Eve and gave them the Spirit to form other children. So Adam and Eve had the power 
de gerar em to generate other creatures. Então, quando a criança nasce, so when a, a child is born, is born to the desire of parents or sin or prostitution, adultery. So these children are born and they are not born by God's will. They are born by people's will. God created only Adam and Eve and gave them the power to multiply. And the same as God created the, the tree, the tree that are fruitful. He created the apple, the first apple. He didn't create apples every day, does he? He doesn't create orange every day, does he? He created one with a seed. It is written, the seed from apple seed of banana is a seed, and this seed man plants and reaps the fruit. The same is with people. People are born because of the will of their parents. They were never born by the will of God. Oh, God gave me a child. Or He gave me a daughter. No. God gave you conditions for you to bear a child. So, you know, in the people in the Old Testament that were barren, you know, the barren woman that they were like the mother of Samuel. She cried. She insisted. And God heard and made her body healed and she bore son. It's like you, if you come here on a Tuesday, sick and bishop here, here the bishop, the pastor, prays and you become healed. Nothing more. Just that. But the child that is going to born from you was not God who gave you. God gave you conditions. God gave conditions to Abraham to bear Isaac, to bring forth Isaac. So these things that are simple is important for you to know. So you can understand. People say, no, God gave my child. Isn't that so? God gave me. God gave me, but God gave you a son from a prostitution? What kind of God is that? He gave you a, a son, a child from adultery? No. God, He gives us conditions so that we can bear children. So, He did not, He did not bear, give them. He created Adam and Eve. So this makes a whole different sense. In the same way as the son, the child that you have, was not work of the Holy Spirit. It was your work between you and your husband, or your mistress, or your adultery, or your promiscuity. But it did not come from God. What comes from God? When it's from God, is from the Holy Spirit. And it says here, Verse 45, the last Adam was a maid, was made a life-giving spirit. So Adam was made living soul. The last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. Who is this one? Jesus. He came. He was not a soul. So there's a big, big difference between living soul and life-giving spirit. So when you are born of the Holy Spirit, you become life-giving spirit. And as long as you're not born of God, you continue to be living soul. Your decisions, your feelings, your choices are made in emotion, in feelings of the heart. But when you are born of the Spirit, if you are obedient, then you are going to generate and make decisions that are spiritual according to God's will. Let us read here the next verse. 47. The first man was of the earth. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man was the Lord from heaven, heavenly. 
as was the man of dust, so are those who are of dust. So, Adam and Eve, they created men of dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. So, from Jesus, from Jesus, you were born, we were born. Those who seek God, those who follow God. So our structure is spiritual, heavenly. When we are living souls, it is hard to forgive those who hurt us, right? But when a person is life-giving spirit, then they are heavenly. They forgive. They give. They turn the other face, the other cheek. They pray to Ela those who persecute, they pray for Ela their enemies, they Ela walk the extra mile, Ela they do what they, the Holy Spirit leads them to do, and they do it in spirit, because they are heavenly, they are a person of heaven, like the angels, just like the angels, the angels, they are the messengers of God in order to do God's will, when we are born, and the angels, the angels, for instance, they were not born of God, Angels, they were created by God. But we know, we, on the other hand, we were, not cre we were created by God. But once we accept our Jesus, we are born of God through the Lord Jesus. This is very glorious. Do you follow what I'm saying? You are not any kind of person when you accept Jesus and you follow him. You can be single, you can be married, you can be the least person in this world, but you are a child of God when you follow Him. You are God's glory in this world. You are a, a, the most richest person in the face of the earth. You are more than what you can imagine. Because you were generated by the Holy Spirit. Just like a child comes from the mother's womb, we, on the other hand, we were generated from the womb of the Holy Spirit, let's say. We are heavenly. We are heavenly. You are heavenly. If, if you were generated by the Holy Spirit, if you have been born of water and of the Spirit, Jesus said, He who is born of water and of the Holy Spirit is what inherits the kingdom of God. Whoever is born of flesh is flesh, is soul. Flesh and soul, the, it is an, an analogy of the heart. Whoever is born of the Spirit is, is what? Is spiritual. And it goes against the flesh, goes against the soul. One thing is to be a living soul and a life-giving spirit. Life-giving spirit. Life-giving spirit. You are a life-giving spirit when you have the Holy Spirit. So it continues by saying, the first man of the earth made of dust. The second man was the Lord from heaven. As was the man of the dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. In, in other words, the, the man of dust carries, of, carries an image of the dust. When man is greedy, a liar, a thief, when they are evil, they are carrying the image of what is of the earth. And this is the world we live in. We live in a world that is of this earth, dominated by the devil. We live in a world where, where hell prevails. 
o réu prevails. Evil prevails. But when someone is born of the Holy Spirit, this person is now a heavenly person. Now they are going to carry the image and likeness of the Most High. You need to be image and likeness of the Most High. How do we see this? I am baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, you say. I have peace, I have this, I have that. Apparently, they have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. But how can we see their behavior. What is their attitude? At home, for instance. At work as well. How is it their way of being with others? If this person behaves as they behave like those of the world, that, for example, they get smacked and then they want to smack back, when they hate when they are hated, they hate, so they have nothing of heaven in them. They still have the nature of this earth. They still have a malicious, a malicious nature, a nature of hell. That is why they are evil. That's why they are nervous. That's why they are, they are bad-tempered. That's why they can't forgive. That's why they are aggressive. That is why they are evil. They are corrupted. They are lying. They keep living in lies and deceit. They are true faith. So they are betraying. They are like a traitor. I, I usually say that when a person who lies is capable to steal, kill, adultery, they are capable of doing any kind of harm because the lie is the beginning of all sins, we would say. The devil is the father of lies, Jesus says. So when a person carries within them lies, they show clear the image, image and likeness of those of the earth. But when a person assumes the truth, lives in truth, suffers because of the truth, pay the price because of truth, so then it's trustworthy. This person is faithful. This person is worthy. They carry the image of righteousness, which is God's image. Amen? Is it clear? Yes or no? If you want to know a person, or if you want to know a person's character, simply evaluate, evaluate three things. Justice, mercy, and faith. Is what Jesus said. You give the tithe of the mint, of the cumin, but you forget the principles that are more important of the law of God, which are justice, symbolizing God the Father, mercy, symbolizing the, the, our God the Son, and faith, Symbolizing the Holy Spirit. You know that the laws, the spiritual laws, they are, they are not different. They are all the same. The same, the same law, spiritual law, in the time of Abraham, exists still today and eternally because it's God's law. And that doesn't change. I'm talking about laws, spiritual laws of spiritual values. And it says... And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Understand? So what is your image? What is the image that you are portraying? What is the image of what's the image? The image of dust or the image of that is spiritual. Each one knows their own. Each one knows their own. I cannot speak for you. I can speak for myself. But the fruits of those that carry the image of what is earthly, it's 
crystal clear, just as the fruits of those that are of heaven are also noticeable. Because whoever is spiritual generates and bears what is spiritual. Whoever is earthly bears what is earthly. I've only come to hear about your power Time and time again I've served you more Not knowing who you are Though I hear so much about him To me he's still unknown This God has torn down walls of stone Parted waters of the sea Though I cannot find a purpose If I praise you with my lips When my life does not show meaning Does not show him what I feel I know time has never changed The greatness of your power God, I know how great you are And I've come to know you more I need to know you more Transform my life forever My eyes, they love to see The truth behind your power I've heard enough of you Materialize yourself in me Oh God Those who know you, Lord, will always find their way in night or day. I need to know you more, transform my life forever. My eyes, they long to see the truth behind your power. I've heard enough of you. Those who know you, Lord, will always find a way in night or day. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. Surrendering your hands, my. 
my praise and adoration, my God. Come and receive my heart and my soul, because I love you, Lord. Without you, my God, I am nothing. I am small. I want eternally in your presence be sincere. I love. God, you are the reason of my life. Oh, Holy Spirit, come upon us. We want to feel you now in this very moment. With all our lives, we want to exalt you and for presence love you Lord oh Holy Spirit come upon us we want to feel you now in this very moment with all our lives we want to exalt you and forever presence love you Lord Father in this very moment I surrender in your hands my praise and I Because I love you, Lord. Without you, my God, I am nothing. I am small. I want to turn in your presence, be sincere. I love you, God. You are the reason of my life. Love you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, come upon us. We want to feel you now in this very moment. We fall our eyes. We want to exalt you and forever in your prayer. Before the 21 days, I was very um, lost. I didn't know what direction I was taking. I was feeling really sad and down all the time. I was completely lost, like the way that I used to dress, the way that I used to carry myself. People could see that there was something wrong with me. I used to wear like heavy makeup. Things that were not needed, I would do just to seek attention because when you're feeling down, when you feel like no one cares and you want to commit suicide, you're completely lost. You don't care what anyone thinks about you, so you dress any, any how you want. When the 21 days came about, I thought two weeks after, I thought, okay, let me give her a try. Let me test God if 
God really exists. If people are giving a testimony during, you know, 21 days, this happened to me, it has to happen to me. So I started taking action. I was doing things that I never used to do, like sleeping on the floor, so, so I sacrificed my bed. I'm a comfortable person, so I like to sleep a lot. I like to feel comfortable when I'm sleeping. So I decided to sacrifice my bed and sleep on the floor for God to actually see that I am doing something to catch his attention. The second thing that I decided to do it was to cut off everything, to cut off social media, cut off um, worldly songs. I decided to just stay far away from these things. What I decided to do also is to listen to the Liberty Radio. So what I would do is that after the, um, the prayer for the 21 days um, finish, I would keep the radio on the whole day. So during the night time, um, there will be gospel songs playing. So even when I'm going to uni or when I was going to work, I'll be playing Liberty Radio. I'll be, you know, listening to the songs that was being played. I wanted God to see that I was not only coming for me just to be one more. What I experienced, I can't even um, express what I experienced because one thing about me is, and one thing that I would tell whoever is watching this video is that you should not, you know, seek for a feeling. The Holy Spirit is by faith. It's not by emotions. So if you mix emotions with faith, you're not going to receive it. After a while, I saw the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's like every single month went past, I started seeing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And then since then, I haven't felt suicidal. I haven't felt lost. I know who I am deep inside. No one can confuse me. No one can tell me what way to go because I know that, you know, the lane I'm going, God is guiding me and the Holy Spirit is directing me to be able to become a strong woman of God to help other people that are struggling what I went through. So everything that I've been through is part of my testimony, but receiving the Holy Spirit is the most greatest joy ever. I'm telling you, like, not money cannot buy this joy. And I can say that today, I am very happy. Way a 
Love.